Good evening and welcome to the celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation. Today is indeed a very special day. Our confirmants will celebrate through a public commitment their desire to continue to be bearers of light and hope amidst a time of uncertainty and hopelessness. As our candidates and their godparents process in, they will be pouring flowers into the baptismal font. This is a sign of their participation in the bigger life of the community, made possible only through our common baptism. So let us now all rise as we acknowledge Christ in our midst. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Fulfill for us your gracious promise, O Lord, we pray, so that by his coming, the Holy Spirit may make us witnesses before the world to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, a prisoner in the Lord, implore you to lead a life worthy of your vocation. 
bear with one another charitably in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. Do all you can to preserve the unity of the Spirit by the peace that binds us together. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called into one. And the same hope when you were called. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God who is Father of all, over all, through all, and within all. The Word of the Lord. Let us now spend some time in silence to allow God's Word to minister to us. Please rise for the proclamation of the Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This proclamation taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory unto you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he's John the Baptist some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. You know, I was... Um, going around asking you what your names were and whether you had a name change. And in the course of doing that, we found out what Nicholas meant. Nicholas, where are you? And what does your name mean? Victory. And I was asking you whether you chose the name or whether someone gave you the name. 
and Thompson, <laughs> you chose the name, right? And it was a cool name, son of Thomas. What's very interesting is that in today's gospel, we have a name change. His name was not Peter. His name was Simon. And he had a name change. He didn't choose the name. It was given to him. It was Jesus who changed his name from Simon to Peter. And I think that this idea of a name change becomes very significant for Peter because his life changes. But today, I don't want to talk about Peter per se right now. I want to talk about Chadwick Boseman. Do you know who Chadwick Boseman is? Everyone, if you know who I'm talking about, could you raise your hand? Okay, it's probably your godparents or your parents who don't know who Chadwick Boseman is. So he is, on the 28th of August, 2020, at the age of 43, Chadwick Boseman died. He was a man who played Black Panther. The movie begins, and this is for those who don't know, but you guys who are being confirmed, you know. The movie begins with T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman, ascending the throne and assuming the role of the Black Panther becoming the king of Wakanda. Wakanda is a technologically advanced country it guarded its technological knowledge with great secrecy, pretending to be a backward country. Now, T'Challa, who is becoming king of Wakanda, has to decide whether, as king, he will open the doors of Wakanda to the world and share its gift of technological advancement. To do so would be a risk because it might make Wakanda less powerful. And if others pick up this technology and move further ahead, Wakanda might be irrelevant. There's a very thought-provoking scene where T'Challa meets his dead father, the former king of Wakanda, because now T'Challa is king, right? And T'Chaka, his father, says to him, you are a good man with a good heart. It's hard for a good man to be a king. His father doesn't believe that T'Challa would be a brave enough king. It is hard for a good man to be a king. Why? Because for T'Chaka, the former king of Wakanda, who guarded its technological advancement, if you are to be king, there's ego, there's pride, you must exert control, you must defend, you must prop yourself up, you must step on others, you must cheat, manipulate, lie to preserve your kingdom. You cannot let anyone else usurp it. And that's why it's very difficult for a good man to be a king. 
and Chadwick Boseman, who plays T'Challa, has a dilemma. Is kingship about being powerful or is kingship about empowering others? Because Wakanda's policy was to keep God jealously preserved, if he becomes king, should he do that or should he open the doors and share? And T'Challa has to come to terms with what type of king he was to be. You see, in a way, we might think that all this is just part of Marvel comic series. But if you look around the world today, you'll realize that this dilemma is there. 5G technology, should we allow it in? Will it be controlled by certain countries? The vaccine, who controls it? You see countries buying stockpiles, reserving it to make sure that their kingdom will be preserved. And here you are, ready to be confirmed with the oil of chrism, which was used to anoint you king. Is it going to be one in which you will keep? Or is it going to be one that you're going to share? You see, Peter was in that same position. Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter, calls him the rock in which he will build his church. He will empower Peter. Yet, actually, we know as Joyce, as Joy told us in the hall, that Peter was far from what his name meant. His name means rock, but he was far from a rock. He was more jelly. He was not a rock. Why do I say that? You see, last Sunday, Peter was called an obstacle. Satan. We know that Peter was a coward. He didn't dare stand up and say, I know the man. At Jesus' trial, he ran away from the crucifixion. He shamed the male sex. It was only the women who stood there with John. He couldn't recognize Jesus at the resurrection scenes. Others had to tell Peter, it is the Lord. And we probably find ourselves in the same position. We choose names. We confirm the name that we have been given at birth. We come here to be confirmed, to be anointed. We ascend the throne, given the keys. And I'm sure that Nicholas will agree with me that not every time we are victorious in our faith decisions. And gee, I'm not sure whether I'm the one who should be anointed king and given the keys. And Jesus is saying, you, Francis, you, Gabriel, you, Thompson, you, Elliot, you, Angelo, I am going to build my kingdom and I'm going to give you the keys. Because that's what he's saying. I will seal you with this decision. 
But Jelly Peter was called the rock, not because he was the rock, but because Jesus was the one who chose him. He will struggle to become the rock. He will have to work it out. Because he wanted a God, a Messiah, who was powerful, who could get rid of all the problems. And he was to learn that he was to encounter a God who would empower others, who will invite him to share and lead. And that is what Peter becomes, the one who empowers the others because Christ empowered him. Peter is given the keys and you are given the keys. What do you do with keys? You either lock something up or you open something. Remember, T'Challa had to decide, does he lock Wakanda up and keep it for themselves? Or does he open Wakanda up? And if he opens, it is to empower the world. And confirmation is really about that. As Joy shared, this is the completion of your initiation into the Christian faith. Or is it the beginning? Gee, does it mean we carry on our Zoom confirmation classes? <gasps> no. It means I have to work it out. I have to work out what my mission is. I got a name. Francis. I have to work out whether I will rebuild the church. The person who is giving me this authority and sealing me and believing in me more than I is Christ. The way he believed in Jelly Peter. We all have our struggles. Some of us, in our whole teenage life, we have already encountered physical challenges. Some of us come from families where there are financial challenges. Some of us have the experience of academic failure. Some of us have, as most of us at this age, the struggle of trying to fit in. It's a social struggle. I'm trying to fit in, I'm trying to be cool, I'm trying to be cutting edge, etc. But it's really quite tough. In my experience in school, around this age, there's a lot of envy and jealousy with others being better. And I struggle with self-esteem. I carry these wounds. Sometimes these struggles become psychological wounds. Some of us know people who even cut themselves because of that pain. Yet as we carry this struggle, as we might even carry baggages with struggling about what the faith means, today is a day we can feel okay. Why? Because Peter was the same person who had to struggle with who is God? Who is the Messiah? What does it mean? And yet, this man, who was a coward at times, who didn't stand up, who couldn't recognize Christ, this is the man that Jesus chose. And how did he become the rock? How did he go through his struggles? He stayed with Christ. 
He didn't run away from that struggle. And by staying with Christ, he eventually ascended that throne and became the apostle who is empowered to empower others. Whatever you bind on earth, Peter, how you share this will be done in heaven. And he does this with the Holy Spirit. That's what we are celebrating tonight, you know. We're not celebrating that we are complete. We're celebrating that we are becoming. We're celebrating that I will now have to live this out. And I am invited to receive the keys to be confirmed with the oil that anoints me into the kingdom of God. I notice in your group that there is no women. It's all guys. But I share with you that we are in a place where as church, we have to think about how we include more and more the fullness of the church. Young men, you ascend the throne, anointed, given the keys, at a time which will be most memorable, because it is a time when the whole identity of the church is also changing. You know, during Joy's time, when you become confirmed, you are invited to become a catechist. You are invited to become a lector. You are invited to join the servers. You are invited to join the ministries. Today, we are struggling trying to think, what does being church mean? Watching a YouTube mass? Is that what being church is? And this is the time Jesus says to you, Young men, on you, I will build my church. So I encourage you to form this wonderful group, confirmed in Christ. Become friends and say, how do I witness this? Because you will have the ways and the answers in how the church is to be for the future. It may be that you get involved with the digital ministry. It may be that you make videos. It may be that you reach out. But if you stay in this group and grow and stay with Christ, I believe this time is yours. As in Black Panther, your time is now. Wakanda forever. Christ forever. Have a wonderful adventure in being church and working out and entering into the struggle to become the heir of the kingdom. God bless you all. My dear candidates for confirmation, just as the Lord asked Peter, who do you say I am? I ask you now to renew your baptismal promises. As a sign of your renewal, with a glass of water next to you, I invite you to now come and stand around the baptismal font. 
I invite the candidates for confirmation to please proceed to the font. Let the hope of your salvation fill our eyes. God of splendor, God of glory, you who light the stars above, all the heavens tell the story of your love. With conviction, I invite you to respond, I do, to the following questions. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I now invite you, my dear friends, to pour that glass of water into the baptism font as a sign of your continuing desire to participate in the mission of the Universal Church, after which you may place the glass on the stones. May I invite the rest of the brothers and sisters to please rise. Dearly beloved sisters and brothers, our candidates, your children, have showed their desire to continue to participate in the mission of the Universal Church. With them, let us now pray to God, our Almighty Father, for these, His adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that He will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with His abundant gifts and through His anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. May the candidates please kneel. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought this, your servant, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, 
fill them with the spirit of fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the candidates please stand. Godparents, please take the candle next to you and make your way to your godchild. As the sacrament of confirmation takes place, as a praying community, let us pray for our candidates. Thompson, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace with you. Elliot Francis, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace with you. Angelo, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace with you. Francis, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Robin Matthew, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Patrick, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Nicholas, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anthony, that's it for me tonight. Anthony, be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Nathaniel, be filled with the gift of Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, let us now humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be of one mind in our prayer. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For these sons, whom the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that guided by Christ our light, they may be beacons of light in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That these newly confirmed may be open to the Spirit who calls each to a special vocation to serve. And may they embrace their calling with such joy and passion to set the world ablaze. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that endowed with special gifts and abilities, we may be guided and inspired by the Spirit to become agents of change and transformation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and godparents, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ as intentional disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, 
that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that, through them and their successors, the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear newly confirmed, you may now place your candle in the baptismal font as a sign of your commitment to pray and be the light of Christ for each other and for the world. And after you have done so, let us gather round the sanctuary and together as a body of Christ, celebrate and receive him in the Eucharist, that we may be bread broken for the world. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servant, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess, profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also your servants, whom you have been pleased to confirm today by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and keep them in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Francis and Clara of Assisi, in all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of, of the, the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Dear confirmants, after you have received communion, you may return to your seat. Godparents and parents, the presider will go to your seat for the distribution of communion. Only after you have received the sacred host from the presider and he has moved on to the next person, may you remove your mask to consume the sacred host. This is the bread of life, this is the cup of joy, this is the table of abundant grace. Receive the gift of life, receive the gift of joy, for Christ is with us when we gather in this place. Share the stories of our faith when we gather in this place. We'll embrace the truth the prophet sang when we gather in this place. We will stand firm in our gospel call when we gather in this place. For Christ is truly present here. When we gather in Let us pray. Accompany us with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and the charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Confirm, O God, what you have brought about in us, and preserve in the hearts of your faithful the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May they never be ashamed to confess Christ crucified before the world and devoted to charity. May they ever fulfill his commands. 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Comfort and